Hello to all. Today we are going to discuss a very very important topic related to the animal kingdom and that is the outline sketch of the classification of the chordates. Okay? And this will be very much helpful to you people in studying the phylum chord data. Okay? So broadly the phylum chord data is classified into two groups. The phylum chord data is classified into how many groups? Two groups. Two major groups. One is known as the A craniata. One is known as the A craniata. And the another is known as the craniata. Now, what is the literal meaning of the word A craniata? A craniata means those which do not have cranium are called as A craniates. And craniates are having the cranium. Those which have cranium are called as craniates. Cranium is also called as the brain box. Cranium is also called as the brain box. So the two major groups of the phylum chordata are a craniata and craniata. Here cranium absent, here cranium present. The a craniates are also called as protochordates. They are also called as protochordates, means primitive chordates and the craniata or the craniates are also called as u chordates. U chordates means true chordates. EU means U means true. So they are true chordates and they are proto chordates, primitive chordates. The A craniates or the proto chordates are also called as lower chordates, means they are primitive chordates. And the craniates or the U chordates are also called as higher chordates means they are advanced chordates. Fine? Now, the group A craniata is classified into two major subphylums. Again, I am repeating, the group A craniata is classified into two major subphylums. Subphylum Eurochordata and subphylum Cephalochordata. Subphylum Eurochordata and subphylum Cephalochordata. Okay. Now, the group craniata is classified only in one subphylum, and that subphylum is called as vertebrata. Okay, vertebrata members are having the vertebral column, and that's why they are called as the vertebrates. Fine. So the group craniata or the U chordata or the higher chordates have only one subphylum, and that subphylum is called as the subphylum vertebrata. Now, the very important thing to notice here is that that this subphylum vertebrata, this subphylum vertebrata is classified into two major divisions. The subphylum vertebrata is classified into two major divisions. The one division is called as the A gnetha. A gnetha means A means absent. Gnetha means jaws. Means jaws are absent in the division A gnetha. And that's why called Agnetha. And division Gnathostomata, division Gnathostomata, Gnatho means jaws. So in division Gnathostomata, the members are having the jaws, right? So here the jaws are present and here the jaws are absent, okay? Now, the division, now the division Agnetha is classified into two major classes. Again, I am repeating. The division Agnetha of the subphylum vertebrata, right, in which the jaws are absent, are classified into two classes. Are classified into how many classes? Two classes. This is a primitive class known as the Ostracodermy. This is a primitive class of division Agnetha known as Ostracodermy, and this class is called as the Cyclostomata. Because they have round mouth or spherical mouth, that's why called cyclostomata. Is it clear? Division Agnetha of subphylum vertebrata is classified into two classes. One is the primitive class known as the ostracodermy, and the another class is called as the class cyclostomata. Is it clear? Now, the another division, right? The another division is called as what the uh, gnathostomata 
and this glathostomata division of subphylum vertebrata is classified into two superclasses superclass species superclass species species means fishes are included here and superclass tetrapoda tetra means four and poda means legs means they have four limbs right means they have four legs okay so superclass tetrapoda and superclass species fine now this superclass species this superclass species is classified into three classes is classified into how many classes three classes plecodermy which is uh, a primitive class and many members have become extinct okay plecodermy the second and the third class is very important known as the chondrokithes don't be confused chondrokithes means cartilaginous fishes means their endoskeleton is made up of cartilage that's why called chondrokithes or cartilaginous fishes and they are also called as elasmobranchii they are also called as elasmobranchii at least two to three times this question is asked that elasmobranchii are in, uh, uh, are what type of fishes so elasmobranchii are the cartilaginous fishes and the third class of the superclass species is the osteokithes as the name is indicating osteo means bone okay so osteokithes are also called as bony fishes they are also called as bony fishes and they are also called as teleostomi they are also called as teleostomi okay so superclass species is classified into plecodermy chondrokithes and osteokithes chondrokithes means cartilaginous fishes osteokithes means bony fishes chondrokithes also called as elasmobranchii osteokithes also called as teleostomi clear now the very important class superclass known as the superclass tetrapoda means they have two uh, four limbs and two hind limbs means four appendages okay so superclass tetrapoda is classified into four classes superclass tetrapoda is classified into how many classes four classes class amphibia in which frogs are included class reptilia in which snakes and lizards are included class aves in which all flying as well as flightless birds are included and class mammalia in which human beings are included okay so superclass tetrapoda is classified into four classes amphibia reptilia aves and mammalia okay so this was the outline sketch of the classification of the chordates uh, it will be becoming easier for you people when you will be studying all these in detail so very first you must know the outline chart about what you will be studying later on so that's why i have given you this chart which is very important so thanks a lot for watching me